surviving the English garden. Got a fire burning. It's now time to get some food. This is a perfect location to set up our snare. Animals can run freely around this area. Making their way to the bushes or out of the bushes is ideal. I'm going to cut myself some rope. Survivalist best friend, the pen knife. This here, this knot is called the Granny Smith knot. It's one of the strongest knots known to man. And if you see, animal walks into it, it's going to garrot it. It'd be ours for tea. Brilliant. I'm just going to tie it up here using another Granny Smith knot. Animal's gonna walk through here, caught it. That's so. Okay, let's set this up again. We'll come back, check this in a few hours, see if we've got it after dinner. Sign of animals. That means we could be close to some dogs. With my snare set and my campfire burning, I'm off to explore my surroundings, see what else this garden has to offer. Here you are. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Come on, this one. Yeah. Come on. This one. Ah, watch out. Watch that. Got it. Got it. Let's go. Come on. Look here. Here. These here are called nettle stingers, more commonly known as a stinging nettle. These are responsible for more than 85% of the stinging nettle stings in the UK. Luckily, these ones are female. You can tell it's female by the fact it's not got any flowers. The male ones you can get a really nasty sting from. In the average English garden, there's lots of resources that could be useful and not that hard to find. You just need to know where to look. This here is what they call the old chubbers tree. These things grow berries, distinctive by the small spikes on them like this. These ones are fairly young. Best way to taste whether they're good enough, give them a little twist and a pull, pop them in your mouth, and if they taste shit, then you need to go higher. We need to go higher. <laughs> Let's do this the burn way. <laughs> These things could go septic in days. It's vital you take them out. There he is. It's a piece. Take them out. Suck it. Get the poison out. Right. Cut this tree and look for some more. I'm going to look for some riper. Dubious beads. <coughs> Just let me get higher and I'll take the camera off you. Let me get past the camera. I've climbed further up the tree. We're just going to look for some riper beads. I think there's some over here. One sec. I've got some here. Do you see? Remember, twist, pull. Let's try this. I think we've got the wrong tree, lads. It's a well known fact that humans produce their own anti venom within their urine. After touching the berries from the Murius Maximus and getting a splinter in the affected area, it's vital to cleanse my hand. Anaphylactic shock is a real ball ache, and if you don't cleanse your hand, it could set in in days. With my hand now cleansed, it's off to check the campfire. Even the experts get it wrong sometimes. My theory is, not enough green leaves. 
as you can see, this is not inconspicuous. With morale low, even a small, simple meal can pick you up. That poo seems to have done the job. Now to get some real food. This here is poison ivy. And contrary to popular belief, it is actually edible. The reason they say it's poisonous is because it's delicious. I was camping out in the English garden. Make sure you've got your spray. Midges can be a real killer. Tropical strength. Midgey spray is the best thing about. That should keep their midges away from me. <coughs> I'm lying in bed. I'm nice and raised as you can see. I'm off the ground. Should be good, protected from all the ants. Good night. Ah! <coughs> My face. Oh, oh. just broke. Where's the bloody hat? Ah, and get it. This has been the coldest night of my life. It's times like these I often think of my friend, Nigel. He was once camping in his garden, and a bee stung him on the arse. We'll see you in the morning.